Hello everyone, um, Jack Green here, player with the Ospreys in the URC and I'm an ex under 20 Irish international as well. Um, this is Passing It On. Uh, I'm here with a very special guest. Um, it depends who you ask, but he's like an awfully GA legend. Uh, he's also like my dad, um, so you're very welcome Dr. Regan. Um, how are things, how are you? It's been a while. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah, that was last night, Jack. Yeah. So don't be yeah. last night, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are things? How are you? All good. How's yeah. work today, all right. All good. How's Thanks work? very much. Yeah. Got Ellen away as well up to up to the airport. So she's gone on her first kind of mature holiday with, with, with boyfriend and that. So yeah. Boyfriend, yeah. He got his I, warnings. Uh, he got his warnings when I dropped him off. So you know it's for yeah, he's, he's a good fella. Yeah. How, I bet, how are I things bet. over? All good. <laughs> Yeah, not so bad. Um, I trained earlier on today. Um, you know, like my knee is okay, but I'm like a little bit sore after the running. Like, but um, you know, all is good. All is good. But okay. we're um we're here to chat. Like, you know, like all things sport. So, I guess my first question is: When you were younger, what is your, you know, like your 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 like earliest memory of sport and when you know like when did you like fall in love with the game yeah i guess um good question first memory of sport actually was 1974 um all ireland football final galway and dublin and i can remember kind of just one snapshot of it and it was Liam salmon missing the penalty um, Paddy Cullen dive and I can't remember who was left or was right and saving it and it was, that was my first memory I think it was black and white television dad my, my dad granddad had just not long built a house down in Offaly we had been living in Dublin and I remember then 1975 was 74 I can remember just a snapshot of Liverpool and Newcastle but the first FA Cup final I remembered was 1975 and to this day I can name all the FA Cup finals from 74 up to the early 90s and after that then it's kind of lost interest a little bit in that but I suppose first early memory has been brought to Roscommon football games that that was Roscommon man and in the late 70s we were brought everywhere to see Roscommon and at that time we were living in Dublin and my wish was to see Dublin go play football which we used to go to that as well on a regular basis. And then Offaly made the breakthrough in Hurland in 1980. And I was 12 and we were coming out Hyde Park in Roscommon with dad. And Roscommon had hammered uh, Mayo in the Connacht football final, but the traffic was heavy and dad had the window down because it was a hot day. And the last five minutes of the Leinster Hurland final were on. And um, everybody was just walking alongside the car, listening to it because Offaly were beating Kilkenny to win their first ever Leinster and only 9,000 people turned up. And the headline in the sports section that morning, I always remember we were in Balahadreen and I read it as a young fella saying, Offaly had as much chance of winning as Mickey Mouse had of becoming president of America. So at that stage, we had moved to Burr and when Offaly had won, I'd, I'd never seen a hurl. I'd never played hurling in underage in school. All of a sudden, it just captured the imagination because you were living in Burr and it was a hotbed of it. <coughs> And that kind of that kind of kicked everything off for me then in many respects. Like, and then Offaly won the All Ireland hurling final the following year, and that that was it. Like, it just became for me after that. I started late enough, relatively late enough, and I was kind of big and strong, but not very skillful. But I, I totally just dedicated myself then for the next number of years to kind of even just to break onto the underage teams. Um, and I, I insanely went at it. It just was the most important thing to me, more than anything. Hurling just became and, everything. Yeah, like at what age, I guess, you know, at what age like, did you know that like hurling is what you like, you know, like want to do? Um, was it from like an early age? Was it from like the first yeah. match that you had been to? Or was it when you like, you know, like watched off you like back in the eighties or that. Yeah, you know, like, actually, I was you know, going like to go so to, successful. Yeah, I was going to go to actually. I was going to Saint Nathan's boarding school in Ballahadreen because fo football, like my brothers, obviously they were living in Dublin and football was their game, and they kicked with, with they played with Aaron's Isle 
in Dublin and Eamon played minor football with Offaly and John was involved with the Dublin under-21 squad. So our game was football, not, not hurling. And Dad mm. wanted me to go to St. Nathie's and Balahadrine boarding school principally because of football and he wanted me to stick with football. And I remember my teacher, Liam Broderick, in national school, calling up to the house to me and telling me, you're, you're a natural footballer, you're not a natural hurler and you never will be. But it was because, as opposed to answer your question, it was because of Offaly's breakthrough in 80 and 81 that had a yeah. huge effect on me, huge effect on all of my age group in around that time. It had a massive effect. It, it, it was just extraordinary because when you look back on it, the GA was founded in 1884 and it took Offaly till 1990 to win the first Leinster and, and 1980 to win the first Leinster and a year later to win the first All-Ireland. So you went like nearly 90 years before you had Offaly ever won anything and you were a young fellow when that happened. So you were very susceptible to the excitement around it. And um, so that Offaly first team that made the breakthrough were our heroes. To this day, they would be. Mm. I was talking to Johnny Flaherty this evening and we were playing a bit of golf tomorrow in the All-Ireland Golfers Hurling Society and you know, I, I'd still to this day have an immense respect for them because I put it down to them how I and others kind of started and we, we we became successful because of the leadership they gave, you know. Yeah, and have you got anybody off that, you know, like particular team who you would look up to as like a, you know, like a like role model or... Yeah. Who yeah. I met who him, that actually, be? believe it or not, I met him. Brian Lowry wrote a book there lately, um... They're doing the rounds in all the counties, your, your best and most special ever day in your county jersey. So that they interviewed about 30 Offaly players who went through their favourite game and the whole thing. And Porig Horn launched it for him. Porig was captain of that 1980 team that made the breakthrough on the 81 team. So he was also a teacher in school. And I won a college's A All-Ireland title in my top three memories of hurling under him. And I won my first college's or club All-Ireland with Borough with us under a non-smoker, non-drinker, um, an incredible role model. And it's, it's interesting that you mentioned role model, not hero, because he was a role model in how he lived his life, how he still lives his life. He's long retired now out of St. Brendan's Community School, but I got the opportunity to have a great chat with him. It's been a long time since I did. And I was able to tell him again a number of weeks ago how much he was important to me in my hurling career. And I told him, that he was, and I told him that he was always my inspiration and always my hurling hero and a man I greatly respect. And I could see it meant a lot to him. Porig is maybe early 70s now. Um, yeah. But like to me, he's an extraordinary man and an extraordinary leader and, and lived a good life and is a very yeah. good man. And I have great respect for that as well. So. And when you were growing up, let's say, obviously hurling was your like, you know, like your like number one sport was there any other sports which you played and which you felt like if you put a bit of time into it that you could you know like excel at or was hurling you like you know like always your like number one and like the game that you loved yeah and like wanted to the, play yeah it was the game I loved I suppose most of all but it was a better rugby player and a better Gaelic footballer and I guess that was kind yeah. of my father played football and the brothers played rugby and football so like just while you're talking there about kind of role models, like for you, and I know at the different levels you've been in New Zealand and Wales and the whole thing, like at, at an early stage in your career now, would you kind of have a, a role model or who would, who would have had an effect or having an effect on you now that, you know, has come as a surprise yeah. maybe that, wow, this, this individual be the coach or a player. Is there anyone out there at the moment, either in New Zealand or, or in Ospreys yeah. that you were considered? Um, I don't know about role model. Like, uh, Paul O'Connell was always a player who I obviously, like, you know, like, look up there. He was, you know, like, second row, and he was, you know, like, he was, like, an immense um, presence, obviously, and he was, like, world-class player. Like, but role model, yeah, I don't know. You know, like, your definition of, like, role model, like, I know, I always, and you might laugh at this, like, I always, like, looked up to you and obviously the advice that you, you know, like, the advice that you gave me. Um, obviously, like, knowing that you have played at a high level and and everything like that, like, I would have looked up to you, like, more than, 
you know, like anybody else, really. Um, like, I know you didn't play rugby really to that high level, like, but it's more so for me now at the minute, you know, like, particularly with like an injury, it's more like the mental side of the game. Um, it's more so like the, you know, like the things off the pitch, you know, like the advice you give me and stuff that have, I guess, like brought me on in my career. Um, yeah, but you always told me whenever I used to bring it up. You don't have a clue. You haven't got a clue. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know that. No, I know that. <laughs> and I'd know from traveling in the car with you. I knew at a younger age when I'd get on to you, yeah. I thought what I'm saying is right. But in hindsight, you look yeah, back. At, like, I always remember a, a game you played at football at underage and I, I was lacing you from the sideline and Liam Broderick said, yeah. don't you ever, ever, ever do that to your own child. He when, said, I I, used, when, I, when I used to play my, like, even my hurling underage games and like my like rugby underage games up until probably under 18, I would have dreaded having you like having you on the sideline because yeah. I knew I didn't even have to look. I knew you'd be on the side. I could just hear your voice like, and you'd be like, Jack, Jack, Jack. And I knew I'd done something wrong. Yeah. Um, well, that's but not like, a good Looking role. back now, no, that's I know not a good that, like, but, like looking back fair. now though, no, but like looking back now though, like, I know you just wanted the best for me. And um, obviously, like, everything that you've been through and, like, sport that you played, like, you just wanted the best for me. But at the time, I was I was on the pitch thinking, like, I, he, he, like he's the last fella. Like, yeah. he's, like, the last fella, like, I want to hear yeah. from. But, but that's, um, not a good, that's not a good thing to be fair about it because I would have been guilty of that. And if I saw another parent doing it, I'd be pretty annoyed and I'd say you're yeah. not... So, like, number one, you can't enjoy your game. And, like, to that end, did you kind of feel under a bit of pressure that you, you had to perform bit. for yourself? Or was it, or was it? did you think that, yeah. you know, you, you were let, you let me down or that I'd be annoyed or you get a gruel? Yeah, out? if I'm being honest. Yeah, do. If I'm being honest, when I was younger, say from, like, under 18s and below, even up to, like, under 20s, like, you know, like Irish under 20s and that, it was... I wouldn't say like more so for you, but like I knew in the in the back of my head that like you'd be watching and like after I played, like a validation for me would be if I got in the car with you after the game and you said Fuck, you were good today, like you know, like that, that's like the biggest validation for me at that age. Whereas now I play a game and I'm trying to get like you know, like validation off the coaches. I understand like, because that. I know. Yeah what I like need to do now like I don't need you yeah. like obviously uh, no like no, obviously like a value right, support right, everything, right. but it's more you're so right. yeah. you know like the coaches yeah. you know like know everything inside out and they know whether you have a good game or not and obviously yeah. you know like ultimately they are the ones who select the team whereas back in the day when I played yeah. like under 18s or 20s when I was playing with Burr whether I had a shit game or not like yeah. you know like you know like you know like I was always going to play even yeah. if you thought I, I had a bad game or not, like, but yeah, yeah when I was younger, definitely, yeah. I would have. I'm sorry when, about I, when I got no, no, yeah. you, but, but it's not no, the because way. I know where you were coming from. Like you know, you just wanted the best for me, and it's not the way to articulate. I appreciate that, either. and like no one should play under a peer pressure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's lots of parents who will go to a game and they'll say, do you know what? He's out enjoying his game or she's out enjoying her game. Yeah. And that's what it should be. But to be honest with you, I would have found, like, when I finished playing, like, I didn't get I didn't get into management full time. And when I did, like, it was full on. Everything was full on. And it was like, it was the same then when you started playing, like I used to look at you, I suppose, as a, as a prism of maybe me, yeah. you know, yeah. and wanting the best for you. And if it wasn't where I thought it was, but I had so many mares as games myself that yeah. my father never said a word to me. Never, ever. The only time he ever said a word to me was I got sent off in 1987. I remember because Spurs got beaten in the cup final by Coventry. And One really of many sending offs. One of many said nine, nine. Yeah, but it was the only time that he ever got really annoyed at me. And I felt bad yeah. for a simple reason. It was the first time he ever did it. And he laced me that night. And he, he told me he was very, very disappointed in me. And he was 100% right because I let myself down and I knew it. And I felt yeah. bad because of what he'd said. Not because I let him down. It wasn't that. It was the fact that he'd never said a word to me before. And uh, 
I, I, I felt really bad about that. But I, 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 you're right, and I would have known it with you, and I, I would have got on your case, and like, I, I, I didn't distance myself and recognize that you were your personality, and yeah. you know how you played and how you reacted. And I, if, if you weren't what, what to me, if you weren't disappointed after, I nearly was annoyed over that. That I thought, yeah. Should be. So I was trying to live it through you, which is not a good thing for a parent. Yeah. But when, when I drove you up a couple of weeks ago to the airport in Dublin, we listened to Alan Wynn on the podcast. Yeah. That's and only, was, you know, like last week really, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Week, was, yeah. Which is why I'm surprised to be fair about it, because now, certainly since you've gone to New Zealand and that, like I would look at the games and, and, and I remember you saying to me, there's nothing about rugby now I don't know about the game and that, you know, understanding the game and everything you're doing. And I realized that at your, not your age, but where you're at in your career, and you're still obviously have picked up a couple of bad injuries, but I would look at it now and, and I know that you're at a high level, a very high level. So I don't comment on that because you don't need feedback from me. <laughs> and I, know, I understand that. Yeah. The coaches. So I, I, I don't know, would it be fair to say that I, I don't, I don't say the stupid things to you anymore about your game or anything like that. Yeah, no, I think you understand that obviously I've been up in Ulster, I've been in Leinster, I've been, you know, I've been down to New Zealand on my own. And I think that you know that that I understand what's needed of me as like a lock, as like a second row. And yeah. I think now you understand the professionalism as well. Because obviously yeah. when you were hurling, Obviously, the professionalism probably wasn't what it is now. Even yeah. with with hurling, like and like the GEA, as you know, like in general, like but in rugby, I think you you understand. Like we talk enough, you know, like for you to know that, yeah. like yeah. you know, like you know, like exactly where I am with my injury, yeah. and even yeah. when I'm back from injury, like you know exactly how I'm going and. You know, if I have a bad game, like I'm, you know, like the first to be honest about it, and like yeah. we have good chats, and like if I have a bad game, like I'll be telling you, you know, where I was poor and where I can like work on, and I think it is handy having, you know, like an old man, like a dad who has played sport because I know like a lot of boys whose parents. You know, when you talk about like me playing like the underage games, how you were like on the sideline, you know, like of like every game, yeah. you know, like, and that alone is huge. Like you were there for every single game, um, whether you were shouting or not is like irrelevant, <laughs> like, but you were there for every game. Like, but I know lads whose parents weren't there for any game and it's that support that obviously is huge, especially when you're at that age. So yeah, it's, um, it's funny, like how things. Yeah, and can you going, detach you know? Can you detach yourself now as a as a professional athlete? You know the different things that drive you, maybe in an amateur sport and your parish and your club, and yeah, you're so aligned with your club, and there's a huge passion there. Like, do you think that you bring? Because I know you and I spoke about not so long about you know about the Ospreys and kind of what's the ambition of the players and that, and I was even thinking about it this evening. And I was really interested in kind of your answer about, you know, I want to win things and I want to win cups. And you kind of say, well, is that the mindset of the group of players or are your yeah. guys looking after contracts and playing for contracts? And you kind of said to me, I don't understand the mentality of somebody who, you know, is yeah. that because of the GA background and you played hurling up towards a minor and that with Bor and, you know, Joe Errity and the lads that were with Offaly at the time would have loved to have had you in with Offaly minor hurlers until your major choice. Like, do you think hurling and coming from a GA background has framed you in any particular mindset that you think can help you in your rugby career? I definitely think so, yeah. You know, obviously, like, the GA and hurling is very much about where you're from and, like, your parish and that. And I think even when I think back now to, like, Leinster, obviously, we were split. Like, Leinster, youths and Leinster clubs and when you went up to Leinster training like there was always you know like a bit of prejudice against school boys like and you know like the very posh and stuff and you had a bit of a chip on your shoulder when you were clubs because lads who were with the the 
clubs played hurling, football, rugby, everything. So I think it has helped me a lot. Like when I went down to New Zealand, you know, like the difference, you know, like I believe why I made like the, you know, like Tago and like the Highlanders was because when I played club amateur like rugby, I knew I was on my own and I knew that I had to bring something different, which was the bit of dog that I had when I played hurling for Burr at like young age. And when I was with Leinster underage and stuff like that, I didn't really, like I knew I had it in me, like, but I didn't really bring it out. You know, like I'd bring it out like every, every now and again. And then when I went up to Ulster, uh, I was, you know, I went in there on like a three year, like a, you know, like, uh academy deal I was only like 19 I was young and halfway through my year one I got a bad back injury like and I knew I didn't you know like I didn't get the opportunity to show the coaches what I could do and then when I went down to New Zealand I knew that like literally it was like make a break I you know like I went down there like knowing that I was going to play club rugby and I knew that, like, I would have had to work on the side, you know, like, work on a building side. But I knew when I was on the pitch, I knew that, like, if I wanted to play for Tago, which was the goal, because I went down there, like, knowing that I wanted to play pro rugby, whether it was with a Tago. And, you know, if I'm honest, like, I didn't think the Highlanders would ever be on my yeah. on my radar. So, you know, like, the Tago, like, was the goal. So when I went down there on my own, I was on my own. Um, I knew I... I had to bring something different. And I think, yeah, like I know what I brought when I played with the Sharks was, you know, like a bit of dog, which I found to be from like my GA background. Like I look back now and it's like, you know, like as you say, you play for your your club or whatever. Like if, yeah. you know, if you're hurling like Ryan, it's like, or Aquilary, like as a Burma, it's like, yeah. you know, like the rivalry there, as you know. Um, yeah. And I think that was the difference for me. And, you know, I was lucky as well because I went down there at the beginning of 2020, which was right at the beginning of yeah, you got a lucky break, COVID. I did get a lucky break, yeah. yeah. And obviously, I went down there in March 2020 and I was there a week and lockdown hit. And I was ringing you, I was ringing Mammy, I was ringing my agent, I was like, will I come home or will I stay? And you said that Ireland was in a pretty bad place as well. So I said to myself, you know, like, I'll just wait and see. Yeah. So what like, happens? Yeah. When you say that, that, and you said this before in an interview, I know you said that you thought the point of difference you bought was a bit of dog. I, I don't necessarily, I actually think you're a bit hard on yourself there on that because like, I think you have huge playing ability as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, there's an expectancy now and looking at rugby now and kind of big second rows, you often say you're not the biggest second row compared to guys that are 21 stone and six foot eight. Yeah. And you came on against Sale in the Heineken Cup. They were bringing a sub second row on and he was six foot ten. And tallest and you, man in international rugby. In international rugby. You look like I was tallest I was man, at, yeah. I was looking at it on Sky Sports and or BT Sports, and I was looking at it going, Oh Jesus, this is terrible. Jack's going yeah. on second row. He's and you look like <laughs> compared to him, like <laughs> yeah. um, like You've had you've had two debilitating injuries. From a confidence point of view, do you still? Because I I do. I, I have a huge, massive belief in you. I really do. Yeah. Um. Do you still retain that? Like I remember when you got the injury and you told me about it. And you were in Harley Street the following week, and your just your attitude was on literally days afterwards was it is what it is. Here's when I'm going to be back five months, and all you yeah. took was positives. The season's going to be you know, coming to an end yeah. at that stage. And already in January, we're saying, I'm going to be hitting pre-season earlier than everybody. I'm going to hit the first couple of games back in September, you yeah. know, as sweet as I've ever been. And I just thought to myself, that's a great mindset. Do you still retain that positive mindset? And you have two years left on the con contract. You know, do you still retain the belief that I'm going to nail this with the Ospreys? Yeah, I think... When you get an injury as a pro rugby player, you know, like I look at a like stat there that I saw that 
every pro player will spend 20% of their career injured. Yeah. And obviously injury is not ideal. And like the length of the injury that I got, like I tore my meniscus, uh, which is, you know, like a, you know, like a like niggly injury. So I've been yeah. out now, I have my operation on the 12th of January now, which is almost like six months now. And like I'm, I've been back running, you know, like a like number of months now, or like, like number of weeks. So I'm hoping to be back, you know, at the beginning of August, um, for those preseason games. But when you get an injury like that, it if it's especially if it's like a long term injury, you have to look at it like you've got like, well, the way I looked at it was you've got one of of two options. You can either cry about it and be like, oh, I've got injured and I'm out for half a year or whatever. Or you can say to yourself, um, like, I want to get back on the pitch. So what's the best way to do it? And like I was in the operation, you know, like I had the operation within a week of my injury. So like a big, uh, you know, like a lot of credit for that goes to the Ospreys and how fast it can have you. Like I was down to London, you know, within a, within, a, like within a week, I was literally down with the consultant the day after the injury. So like a lot of the credit has to go to them. But I think as a pro player, I think especially when you move to a new club, I was only, you know, like last year was my, you know, like the beginning of my, my first year with the Ospreys. So I wanted to make an impact. And obviously when you get an injury halfway through the year, only after playing like a handful of games, it's, it's, you know, like not ideal, but at uh, the end of the day, it's the game we play. So we yeah. know there's going to be injuries. So yeah, I think definitely like my outlook now is like, I'm going to be back in, you know, like a number of weeks. And, uh, you, know, like I, you know, like I'm just glad that I can play in the preseason games, which will, you know, like roll into the, you know, like the beginning of the URC, yeah. but yeah, um, it's lucky though. I'm, you know, like I'm, you know, like the group of lads who are injured now. It's quite high profile. Like at, you know, like at a time you had, you know, like Alan Wynn with a shoulder and George North and lads like this. So you like learn off those lads as well. And when you when you like look at lads like Alan Wynn who's who plays in like my position as well and he gets the like one percenters out of his recovery if he's injured he's doing everything he can he can he can you know like do to get back yeah, there's a role there's a role yeah. model, you know i guess from that perspective and, and i know you spoke yeah. very highly me so it was an extraordinary wait till I, I ask you i remember something that came into my mind was do you remember i think it was a couple of years ago you were home or was it you were home from new zealand and and when was it, it was a couple of years ago anyway and I think you and Ellen um, had watched, I think, up in Crinkle, the All-Ireland from 94. And I was over in Tullamore. And I think, yeah. were you going up to Donegal with Mammy? <laughs> and uh, Helen rang and said to me, Jack and I watched the All-Ireland final today in 1994. And I kind of was on the phone going, oh, yeah, yeah, well, what do you think? And she went, Daddy, Jack and I thought you were useless. I'm yeah, it's funny you say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny. Because... I'm just trying to remember it did. I don't, I don't think that because you were so involved from a young age in sport and I suppose I was trying and wanting and desperate for you to be the best that you could. I didn't think that, I didn't think at, at a, before you'd even started rugby, so I had no idea you were going to get the opportunity, yeah. make the opportunities for yourself. So I don't recollect you and I ever much, you, you might agree or disagree, but I don't recollect those ever talking much about me playing hurling much our games did we um we did a lot because i remember oh did we sitting at home you know any evening of the week you would bring up about how you went to like america and how you were the big dog over in, over in boston <laughs> and stuff but we're making I up suppose, lies now no but i no, i'm not making up lies i suppose a question you know that i've always want to ask is when you go back to 94 you won the all ireland yeah. But from chatting to you, I remember you telling me that you had a poor game, like by your standards, like your own yeah. description. Yeah. Would you rather, as a player, 
say Hurling Frothery like back in the day in like the All Ireland Championship, would you rather have played, you know, like like a man in a match game yeah. and lose the game, or oh, no, would you no, rather not have not at all played shit? Yeah, no, you not know, at and, like, all. I won not the game. At all. Not at all. That's that's a silly question. You should know that. Is it? Yeah, it is a hundred percent. And I'll tell you why. I remember Joachim Kelly in nineteen eighty one. And Joachim was a, such a servant often, he was brilliant. And he played in the two All-Irelands that Offaly won in 81 and 85. And Joachim Kelly would be the first to admit he got beaten by Steve Mahan in both games. Mahan was a dog for Galway, like an animal of a midfielder. And just, he was Joachim's nemesis. Joachim just couldn't handle. But Offaly were so tight with numbers at the time, even winning All-Irelands, that Joachim didn't get taken off. And But it didn't matter. He was still a... Still a hero in Offaly for all his service, the amazing service that man gave to Offaly. So he didn't play well in two All-Ireland finals. But Joachim Kelly doesn't remember that in his career, or at least he wouldn't speak about it. Or maybe privately now and again, he might think, Jesus, the crown and glory could have been if I played really well. But I'll never forget something that Joachim did. And we, we didn't always get on in our time at Offaly. And even subsequent, when Joachim was part of the management, we probably never gelled and wouldn't be friends. But I don't know what he thinks about me, but I have a huge respect for that man. But when we won the All-Ireland in 1994, at that time, people could still come into the dressing room in Crow Park. Joachim Kelly made it his business, and I will be forever eternally grateful for the gentleman for what he did. So we had won the All-Ireland, and on one hand, it was euphoric because it was your dream to play in an All-Ireland and win one. But already the mindset was, I played shit and I got taken off. So that was kind of a little nagging thing. Whereas if you had mm. played a really good game and you'd been on for the whole thing, it'd be complete euphoric. And, and everyone is different. That's just the way I was. So even in the dressing room, 40 minutes after, it was hugging fellas and your teammates didn't care whether you played well or not. Everyone was on such a high. But Joachim Kelly came over to me and he said to me, are you all right? And I said to him, I am, yeah. And he was very straight. He said to me, you're disappointed because you didn't go well and I, and I said, ah, sure, you know, it's all right. And he turned around and he mm. said, I want to tell you something. He said, the photograph of that team will go up around every establishment and every pub in Offaly and every hotel premises all over Offaly. And in 5, 10, 15, 20 years time, there's not one person there will remember how you played or how you didn't. Now, they'd remember Johnny Dooley's goal and they'd remember the last five minutes. But... And, he, and he's 100% right because I go into Diagon's for a pint and right where we sit, all the off the All-Ireland teams are there. And I've had visitors down and friends down and all of that. And next thing, they're looking, like, oh, that's the 94 team. Oh, Jesus Christ. They wouldn't have a clue how you play. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the interesting thing to answer your question, the following year we got to the All-Ireland and I did have that great game. And I was vying probably for man of the match. Michael... Mick McCarthy there was often on off the ball there in News Talk actually sent me a message a couple of nights ago and said, I've just watched the 95 All-Ireland again on TG Carter. You had a brilliant game. And the only thing it meant to me was the disappointment of losing to Clare sometimes still comes back at me. But there was personal redemption. There was personal redemption because I didn't fold in another All-Ireland. That would have been hard to live with. So I knew it was just a bad day. That's all. So yeah. You asked me, 95 played great and lost with a goal in the last minute. Yeah. Or 94 played poorly, got taken off, and we won in the manner we won. 94, I have a lot of things in my life that I've, I have and jobs over the years that I got was on the back of hurling and probably on the back of successful hurling. So, it, yeah. Personal basis, yeah. But no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't swap it. I wouldn't swap it. You've probably answered, you know, like my next question, which is, you devoted your life to Hurlan and the GA. Have you got any any like regrets or any No. No, no one, regrets. Not one. And not I'll one, tell you yeah. why I don't have one regret. I'm sorry we lost some games, but I don't have regrets. And mm. I'll tell you why I don't have regrets. You could look back and say, if I minded myself better, would I have played better? I did what I did before games. I got the benefits when I minded myself as a proper athlete did at the time. And usually I played well. When I didn't mind myself, I didn't affect games the way I could have done and should have done. But they're not regrets. They're life choices you make at the time. So 
looking back and saying, I wish I did this or I wish I did that is a futile and pointless exercise, which I've never allowed. And I could have done it after mm. 90, after missing out on the All-Ireland in Offaly, because that was all my fault. In yeah. And I would have won another All-Ireland medal. And the lads and my colleagues and my teammates that I've been with for years were disappointed for me. But they knew they knew to crack with me at the time. But that evening when I left Crow Park, I was euphoric for the lads. Amazing win. And I got into the car and I was in Mayo the following morning for a meeting at about half eight. And I said, right, Offaly have won. I've lost out in an All-Ireland. I was still in my late 20s. And I said, right, you park it now. Because that's the type of thing that can eat you up. Eat you up totally. So yeah. I put it to the back of my head. And sometimes people have asked me, and in the space of the last nearly, tw- it's nearly 25 years, I've never let that surface because I yeah. made my choices at the time. It cost me an All-Ireland medal. But I can't turn and point the finger at anybody else. So if yeah. I was to say, anything to you like your mindset from the day one i have to say i i would have a great respect for your mindset because you're you're, you're a stronger mindset than i had far stronger mindset than i had when i was younger and trying to make it like it was i had your mindset then from 14 yeah. on 14 on i i would have had a, a, a ruthless mindset that i was going to make it even though i wasn't as good as the others and yeah I, and I did, and, and I influenced games and big games, and I won a lot out of it. So when I didn't mind myself to the levels, my performance levels dipped and my career finished a lot sooner than it should have done. But it is what it is. I look yeah. at you, and I look at your mindset, and it's like, to me, I look at you, and you seem to be, nothing's going to stop me. Yeah, it's interesting though you, you say that, because right? I've been asked, and it's my question uh, to you is, like, I've been asked, Oh, would your dad, no, like, would your dad have rather you play hurling for Offaly or where you are now? You know, like, have gone down the, like, rugby route? And I know your answer to this, like, already, like, but, you know, like, for you to explain it, like, how would you, like, you know, like, answer that? Do you know the answer? Because to me... Yeah, I do know the answer, yeah. I I, I, I never, never, ever, ever, it was like, I can remember one night having a conversation and, and... you said to me, I want to give the rugby a go. And yeah. I asked you. Well, what ultimately, it. when I say I know the answer, like I know the yeah. answer, you were going to say to me, whatever makes you happy and whatever yeah. you enjoy most, yeah. whether that's hurling for Offaly, hurling yeah. for Burr, you know, like shoveling yeah. shit. Like that's your answer. I know that's your answer is yeah. whatever well, makes you happy. Like, but I know that you knew that I had the potential to, you know, like make a career out with the rugby. Yeah. And yeah, I think you know if I had have gone down the like rugby route, I think you know like me and you, well definitely me, I would have you know like looked back and said, what if? Yeah, you know. Well, it might have been a bit harder on you if you ended up playing hurling with Offaly. I remember bringing you up to the Leinster Utes up to Nace, and when you were kind of subbed the first year with Leinster and even the second year with Leinster Utes when you won the. The interprovincial series, like you know, you, you didn't play every full game, even though I thought yeah. you were playing good, good rugby. But I used to watch you then with Leinster youths graduating after that, and those guys that were on the Leinster team, they were all falling away one by one by one by yeah. one. He kept, and I thought, geez, this kid has something like he's so bloody determined, you know, not the biggest, not the strongest relative to bigger second rows. And then I remember watching you one day in Donnybrook, and I think it was Alan Tynan. Alan Tynan said to me, have you seen Jack in a bit? And I said, no. And he said, he's not going to know the park with Leinster. And I said, oh, is he? And you had said to me, you're a ball man. I remember I was up in Donnybrook that day and watched the game and I thought you were outstanding. And then, you know, I, I know in Ulster you were doing really well early days because I remember talking to some of the guys who were saying, you know, you're the next Alan O'Connor and then you got the injury. So they've debilitated you, but you've come back. If you had played Hurling, I wonder, would you have been under more pressure playing Hurling? Like, yeah, because well, I think obviously so... with with Offaly, obviously like not going great in the last few years. It's because I was your son. Yeah, I know that's maybe a thing. Like, but I think when you look at like the boys from Burr, and like I know like one of the questions here was, what did your friends like make of you when they like knew your dad was obviously like that Regan? Like, but like you no, know, like the majority of my friends 
were lads from Burr, like the Pilkins and like the Cattles and the Murphys, whose dads yeah. were who would have played with you. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I think, um, like luckily I look like now and I'm friends with all those boys, you know, like from Burr, like they're like my best yeah. friends. Yeah. And I think it's very interesting where lads end up. Like I know yeah. lads, you know, like obviously like, you know, like Boney Cattle is... Hurl of Froffy now and quality, Spud Murphy is back yeah. in Burr yeah but like I like to go back playing hurling when hopefully I've got another 10 years maybe in yeah. pro rugby and saying that though I would like to go back and obviously if my body allows me because obviously you know, yeah. like rugby's like rugby's that game but like I like to go back and play hurling if it, even if it's junior or whatever for Burr yeah. after the end of my career <laughs> you know but like I'm saying that now very optimistically, like you know, yeah. with like rugby. You know, and um, so so where you're at with the injury wise and all that, and you hopefully you get a good run of things, and you, you think about your career and you think about what you want. When when you would look back and the different chats that we have, or maybe maybe even stories you've heard, kind of from some of the bar lads, if you were out, oh maybe geez, your dad was a bit of a mad or kind of thing yeah, and all that. Do do you ever think about that and think, right, there's potential pitfalls there for me? You know, unless no, I, I don't think so. No, because okay, I would have heard all those stories, like, but I know, and you know, I'm my own man, and yeah. I think, like, you know, like we are very different, like me and you. Yeah, saying that though, we are very similar. Like I see, like little things I do that resonate with you. Like even when I'm driving the car, I've got my arm up on the side, like you do, and stuff. Like little things that I do that, yeah. you know, like you do, like but. In terms their, of their mannerisms, more than anything, mannerisms, I, I, yeah. But I'd agree with you. I, I I've always thought this. Like I mean, and said it here, and said it to Mammy as well. That, like, from a personality persona point of view, I think you're way more like 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 your mom. Yeah. You know, kind of uh, way more chilled, way more relaxed about stuff. I tend yeah. to get very. Ellen is the same as me. Like very high and low. Like I mean, yeah. to me. To me, losing like, and, and it's probably one of the things I probably saw with you. And I see, I, I get on Ellen's case over a little bit with the Komogi, like, and again, it's everybody's personality. But to me, even when I managed Ballinamere in the under 20 there, that final against Bor a few years ago, mm. my, my diagnosis was in with me. And like, people just couldn't get their head around it. Porrick Freeman, whose son Connor obviously was playing with, with, with St. Brendan's in that under 21 final. Like I managed that team and we lost it in the classic the first week of December. It was like 5.14 to 4.13 and we looked like we had it and it got snatched away. I literally for three months couldn't sleep. Literally. Mm. So much suffered. Like so much suffered. Like mentally, that was just like, and like that's not a good thing. Like, and I nearly stopped managing teams because of that. The same with Trump calling over a bad loss we had years ago. And I remember I thought the players aren't hurting like this. So like to me, to me, the highs were so high. And, and this is the difficulty I had, like the big wins and the highs. Like I remember the Club All-Ireland final in 98. I got myself in the best shape ever. You were only a year old. And I played just outstanding hurling. And I remember Tommy Errors, he died in the semi-final in the stand against Clare Castle. And I got the winning point in extra time. And we won that final and I just... It was like I had defied everybody and I proved so many doubters wrong. And like, instead of going back in, I'm awfully fitter than I'd ever been. I just, and anyway, made a hames of it. But the same with the losing then, like the bad losses, like used to just take so much on me. So much, even managing a team, like an under 20 team, like, and there's no enjoyment to that. And it's like, I get the same kind of in work, good yeah. stuff that happens. It's highs and the lows get me down and, even now at 55, I still kind of even nearly have to talk to myself and say less of the highs and less of the lows and more of the balance. And you have that. To me, you have that. And I used to kind of look at that and say, you lack that ruthlessness. But actually, it was wrong. That doesn't mean that you're not ruthless. You take your wins and your defeats in a different way than I did. And unless yeah. you were either way up or way down, I was probably judging you on that. And that's totally wrong. Yeah. I know how professional you are. And I know how driven you are. It's just you have a better balance. And I'm yeah. glad to see that you have that. I'm glad to see that you have that balance. That it, 
because it can ruin your game and ruin your enjoyment of the game if you don't have a sense of balance. Disappointment's a good thing to drive you on, and celebration is a great thing when you win. But it's to balance and know how low you can get and how high you can get. And I probably, I probably struggle with that at times, and that took away from my enjoyment of the game. But I'm glad to see that you don't have that. If you had a weakness, yeah. where, where do you think it might be? Mentally, do you think you're pretty, have you a strong mind? You know, or do you, do you ever question yourself? Or? Of course you'd question yourself after like a bad game. It's a, uh, but I feel when you're at the level, when you're at the pro level, like, you know, you belong, like, you know, like, not like, you know, like, no, you belong, you're like, but you, you know, like, you, you do all the training in the week and you know that you're like ready, but I feel um, you'd question yourself, uh, would I question myself? I'd, I don't know. I feel like I've done it. You know, you go to, New, you know, like I, you know, like I go back to New Zealand again and it's probably the one place in the world where, you know, like I went down there and obviously like an Irish lad go down to New Zealand is like, you know, like the, they don't even want to look at you and you have to like earn their respect. And like, I feel like, you know, like if I can play, if I can go from like the bottom of like clubbery, you know, in like New Zealand, I can you know like up to playing with the, with the Highlanders. Yeah. I feel like, you know, like mentally just myself, I feel like I'm like mentally strong enough to overcome, you know, like most things like that. I've, faced so far in my career Good. and I think you know the uh, last thing is my injury like I think if you get a clear run of injuries I, I'm really yeah. convinced you have the mentality to make and I hope you do yeah. but uh, maybe we you're trying to be wrapping it up now yeah um if there's do you sorry, know what if I'd there's say anything here? if there's obviously where I am now in my career what would be the key piece of advice you'd give me going forward in my career obviously now I'm just back from injury yeah hopefully in, in the next like number of weeks is there anything I know we talk about this a lot but is there yeah. anything do that you know you'd... What? do you know what there isn't um there isn't and I'll tell you why because you hit the nail on the head at the very start you've got professional people around you so they'll give you the best advice in relation to your rugby yeah. do you know what the best advice that I think I could give you is I'm proud of what you're trying to achieve and the way you're going about it but the proudest thing I am about you most of all is you've never changed your manner you have you have the most gorgeous manner and at some stage you won't be playing rugby and i just mm. think the manners the manners that you carry with you the yes please the no thanks that you've always had and that you have always used in the way you treat people i'm happy that after rugby you'll have people that look after your rugby and you'll do that yourself but i'm really confident and happy that when your rugby is over that your pers persona your personality, your your lovely, lovely manners and your decency is going to help to bring you on to the next stage of your life where where maybe I'd be in a better position to be giving you advice about mm. different aspects of your life. But in your rugby, enjoy it. Listen to the top people that you're with and feed off of the likes of the Allen wins and all of these, but ultimately be your own man. But your people who look after all of that, I just love what you're like off the pitch. That's yeah. and Don't change that. that. That would be my advice to you. Where is your off the jersey? Uh, I wore my mine. jersey. I wore mine. Go, Where's yours? It wouldn't go over my arm, but don't worry. I'll have the green, white, and gold on me on Sunday when hopefully we're going to down tip in a minor final. Hopefully. But listen, right. listen, hey, thanks very much. It's nice to talk to you. Love you. Mind yourself. Love you too.